Be sure to subscribe to us on Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, Google, wherever you get your podcasts from. I'm Pastor Padron, and I'm here with my co-hosts, Paul, Nick, and Dave. Kendra, the potion master, sitting here to my left. And next to her, we have Talia, one of our favorite guests from the spirit industry. Hello, Talia. How are you doing? Good. I'm doing great. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. It's not a bad. It's not a bad day when you get to record a podcast like this. What do you say, Paul? Excellent. Excellent. That is what Paul says. <laughs> I'll, just All point right. I'll just point the next shirt. <laughs> and today we are starting out by smoking the new Rocky Patel TAA release for 2020, the Exclusivo. It is a Mexican San Andreas wrapper around Nicaraguan binder and filler. It's a Toro size cigar. It is six inches by 52 on the ring gauge. And for those of you who may be new to cigar smoking out there, let's explain what those three letters TAA uh, means on these cigars. TAA stands for the Tobacconist Association of America which was founded back in 1968. The TAA is currently made up of about 80 different retailers around the United States and about 40 different um, uh, manufacturers of cigars. And one of the perks that's offered to the retailers who are members of this association are TAA cigars, cigars that those 40-some manufacturers make exclusively for members of the TAA. They're not sold online, you can't get them anywhere else. They're not even in every store. Only stores, brick and mortar stores, that are members of the Tobacco Association of America can carry them. And this time, we are smoking this Rocky Patel, which was one of 14 that have come out this year. And so we're going to be smoking this cigar and letting you know what we think and Talia here has brought some beautiful tequila to pair with this cigar. Well, you want to talk about the, um, uh, well, before we get to the the specific tequila, you want to talk about what tequila actually is? Sure. So tequila is a spirit that's made with the agave plant. So an agave sort of looks like a pineapple that you dig out from under the ground. It's sweet. If you were to take a piece of it and just eat it after it's been roasted, it sort of tastes like a sweet potato dipped in honey. So it's like really sweet, very flavorful. It's nice. It's delicious. So once (laughs) once you crush all that juice out of there, that's used in the distillate. So it is created from a fruit. Okay. And there's the different levels. Of tequila, Dan. Yeah, so if you yeah. want me to what, talk you about mean, those. And that means you're talking about reposado and aneo and all that stuff. Yes. What what is what do those terms mean? So you have four different levels. So you start out with your silver. So those are your clear tequilas. Mm-hmm. So that's unaged. Okay. You can call it plata, blanco, whatever you want. Now reposado is the next step up. Okay. So that's slightly aged. Minimum requirement by law is three months. Now Avion does six months. Um, for their reposado, but it is aged in traditional oak barrels, much like whiskey or scotch. Now the añejo is the next level up, so that by law has to be 12 months aged, and Avion does 18 months for their regular añejo. Mm -hmm. Now with the extra añejo, that's the fourth level, that's what we're drinking tonight, it has to be by law aged in the traditional oak barrels for at least 36 months. So... Tonight we're drinking Avion 44, so if you could guess, it's 44 months aged. Okay. 
And it's the traditional oak for 43 months, and then the 44th month, they put into small, what they call petite oak barrels, and rotate it every single day for a full month. So that's getting all of the liquid touching the oak every single day. So it's almost like hyper-aging it for that one month. Okay, nice. All right. And <clears throat> that month really makes, a, really makes a difference? It does. So... Like I said, it's hyper aging, so it's mm -hmm. almost like the ocean that we had tried previously. How right. that's only out sea for a few months, but it tastes like you know years and years because of that process. When the liquid is in contact with the wood so much, it's taking on a lot more flavor than if it was just sitting there. All right. So this is the uh, extra Anejo Forty Four. Yes. Um, so what should we be tasting with this tequila here? So right off the bat. It's that toasted agave, so it's mm -hmm. pretty sweet. You get oaky notes. I feel a little slightly smoky sometimes from mm -hmm. that wood. And then very citrusy. Avion is known for being peppery, so that's another very strong note. Mm -hmm. Other people get different flavors. Some people say they can taste eucalyptus. There's a whole bunch of like fancy things that people say they taste, but those are the three main flavor profiles that you get. Does anyone get eucalyptus? <laughs> no. Nope. No. I'm not sure I could even pick out eucalyptus. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd want eucalyptus. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ooh. All right. So that's the tequila we are smoking, uh, drinking with the cigar that we're smoking. <laughs> Someone's been drinking a little. Early. Someone's been drinking a little bit too much, perhaps. Not me. <laughs> no, I'm the one who's smoking. I know. Okay. So. But before we uh, kind of catch up with Talia and everything, what, what do we think of the uh, uh, tequila here? What do we think of the cigar? What are our opening thoughts on the pairing? Uh, Dave. Mm. Mm. No. Mm. Mm. Okay, well, that's, that's good. <laughs> Use your words, Dave. Uh, the tequila is not as the tequila, tequila I had. Uh, <laughs> tequila is not as tequila as I'm used to having. <laughs> uh, so in my younger years, you know, you'd take the, the lime and the salt and, and, and uh, you'd be like, this is like, it is so smooth. Uh, there is like no burn. Mm -hmm. I think Paul is a Sally for adding ice. Um, uh, uh, Shots fired. Uh, That's all right, Dave. Water Listen. opens up the flavors, yeah. just say. <laughs> just wait till I get the light description. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> the cigar is uh, unlike any patella I've had before. It's got like this, the draw first is amazingly open. It is like, it feels almost like a box press cigar. Uh, then it's got like this weird peppercorn taste. Um, and I'm kind of blown away with it right now. Whoa. Okay, well, we'll let you get your brain back together, and we'll, we'll move on to Nick. What are your thoughts here? In like 30 seconds or less. <laughs> tequila is better than the cigar. Okay. I'm enjoying the tequila a little the tequila, bit more. It's a $100 bottle of tequila. So that's, that's on, sale. on sale. On <laughs> sale. For $99. $99. I'm, I'm a buyer. <laughs> um, Rock and Tell, I thought it was going to be a little bit stronger with the San Andreas. Um, really nice flavors, getting some earth, getting some spice, really smooth. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty much it. That, that's all I'm getting from the cigar so far, about mm, a little more than a quarter of the way down. Uh, come back to me later, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> quarter way through and we're five minutes into the show, that's great. <laughs> to 20 minutes. It's an easy draw, what do you want me to say? It's an easy draw. All right, Paul. <laughs> so, all of you know that I shudder. That's what I thought of drinking tequila. Mm -hmm. But Kendra has helped me to get over that. And uh, Talia with tonight with the Avion, uh, I'm really liking this very much. Um, this is, I will call this a refined. Refined mm. tequila? Refined tequila. Very, refined very higher premium. end tequila. It doesn't, it, and to, to piggyback off what Dave was saying, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not getting the traditional tequila flavors that would. Make me now. What do you over. are traditional tequila? It's just that I don't know. It, like I said, I've had a bad experience many years ago, and it's just got that that 
smell and, and taste that just makes me cringe. You gotta stop so, drinking Jose. So, right, exactly. Well, that's why I stopped three years ago. So this one has got a lot of pepper notes up front. Mm -hmm. Very smooth. Um, you're saying it has agave flavoring. I never, I don't drink anything with agave, so I'll just assume that's the sweetness mm -hmm. of it. Um, I actually get maybe a little bit of honey from it too. Mm -hmm. So I think it's an, it's incredibly smooth. Get peppery. Sweet potato. Sweet potato. No. <laughs> <laughs> It's sweet it's, and the reason why I put ice in it, obviously, is I like my drinks cold, but obviously, I just had to kind of tip, tiptoe into this. Well, Talia uh, also suggested putting the ice in there. So the I'm going with her so, suggestion. But so I actually, will, with, sorry, not to interrupt, with aged tequilas and scotches, a lot of times they'll tell you put one cube in there, put a little water, because it opens up the flavors. Yeah, more. yeah, it's really, really good. I'm enjoying this. And actually, yeah, I, can actually, I can actually say I could have another one. Whoa. And that, really? and yes. That, is saying a lot. That's what I like so, to hear. Kudos. With the cigar, <laughs> now I've had many cigars, we've all had many cigars with a San Andreas Maduro wrapper on it. This one here is light to me. It's, it's a very light uh, flavored cigar. Um, it, uh, some, some earthy notes, a little bit of sweetness, uh, uh, some, some spice, but not a whole lot more than that. I think other ones have maybe a little bit more body with this. This is, I'd say, a very light uh, body cigar. Um, would you call it a, uh, would you call, you'd say still it was a medium body it's, cigar. It's a medium right? body cigar. Yeah, I'm yeah. not going to go beyond a medium body. Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm so used to having a much more of a medium full or full of body cigar with the uh, San Andreas wrapper. So just you know, maybe a few more minutes with this and the tequila and come and back. Things might get even better. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now, Talia, you know, Paul here has expressed something that I hear a lot, you know, the... The you have tequila when you're young, mm -hmm. and you have this incredibly bad experience, you know, and, and you write it off. What is it about, you know, other brands of tequila, other kinds of tequila that? I mean, why is this so different from like the 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 Jose's of the world? The Jose's of the world. So. Brands like Avion, you know, Altos is another one, even Patron, they use higher quality fruit. Okay. And they use higher quality methods, tra more traditional methods. I mean, they're crushing their agaves with a two-ton volcanic stone to get the juice. Wow. Where a lot of places are just throwing it in a mill. So it's just, <laughs> it's very much about the quality. Take your shoes off and start thinking. <laughs> just stick it down. <laughs> So um, a lot of it comes from traditional methods, quality agaves. Avion doesn't use any fertilizers, chemicals, nothing in their fields. High elevation land, so they're very rich. And the sugars cook down so much when it's roasting that it's actually not that sugary hangover feel that you get the next day. I mean, for me. <laughs> no, I, I agree. You know, the cur uh, you know tequila is one of the, the spirits that I know the least about. And, you know, Kurt Kendall, who uh, owns Twins 724, he's a big tequila guy, and he's you know, brought some stuff into the store. We have some, you know, unique, you can't call them single barrel, right? Tequilas for us. What, what, what do we call them, Kendra? The tequilas that he's bringing in. Small batch. He's barrel select. Barrel select. Yeah. Barrel select, barrel select. yeah is, is I think what he calls them. Mm -hmm. Those have been really, really good and very different from what I have experienced before. And I just you marvel at the, at the difference. There's, it, it's, it's a totally different experience. And, you know, one of the uh, other things that Kurt has uh, really gotten into is using the tequila flutes here. You you want to talk a little bit about the difference the flute makes versus having it in a rocks glass or something else? Why why this for tequila? Well, it's a it's a nosing glass. It's the same as drinking your whiskey out of a Glen Cairn. You know, you're mm -hmm. gonna get the right aromas, and it helps you to you know, appreciate the spirit more. I think every spirit has an appropriate glassware. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, I mean that's that's what it was designed for is to to appreciate tequila appropriately. And because it gets your nose right in there. Yeah, and there must be something about like the stem on it too. Like, you know, yeah. probably <laughs> you should be holding it from the stem. It traps the aromas too, mm -hmm. the narrower. Yeah, because it narrows yeah. at the top. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and my guess on the stem is you should be holding it from the stem and not the... Probably. Yeah. Which, again, Something about the temperature. On very the... little experience. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Now, I'm very interested, Kendra. What do you think of the pairing here? Do you think the tequila is going well with it? Do you think it's too mild? Yeah. Too mild? yeah. I do think it's going well. I think, um, you know, I agree with a lot of the tasting notes that have already been brought up. When I when I tried the tequila before I lit up the cigar, I, I was getting, you know, I think that honey flavor that Paul was saying, that is the agave. Mm -hmm. That's what I would assume. And um, I was getting a lot of honey slash agave a lot of oak and now that i am i'm paired with the cigar i i'm picking up more of that pepper that some of you guys were were, were getting before so i do appreciate the tequila for the the flavors in the front it has a clean finish it doesn't linger so you know that makes it on this definitely a, a smooth tequila mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm pleasantly surprised that you don't have me smoking a full-bodied crazy cigar. So, <laughs> so thank you. Yeah, I think the strength is pairing up quite well. And, you know, something to add on to that tequila talk. When, when, I, when I had a little bit of training with Eddie from La Coretta, I do believe he said that Jose was not 100% agave. That would make sense. So that would make sense on why it's considered to be like... It's all so clear to me. <laughs> so what percentage, I don't know, but I mean, it could be, you know, definitely okay. the reason why it, why it will kill you. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, you're always hearing people talk about tequila hangovers and how yeah. bad they are. And one of the things Kurt shared is that when you're, you know, obviously when, you know, when you're drinking, you want to stay hydrated anyway yeah. but right. that when you're drinking you know higher quality tequilas you, you don't get that hangover mm -hmm. is that your experience from what you're drinking <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i don't know it's definitely my hangover. experience it's just part of life <laughs> <Right. I> mean, <laughs> <laughs> now talia what what makes the um avion tequila stand out from other tequilas that are in its uh, price range and, and rank and everything like that. Um, so I could go on forever about this. I'll try and keep it short. But that traditional method is very, um, is a huge role in why it's so, ref like, so smooth, so tasty, and why it doesn't give you that hangover. Hmm. Also, the elevation that the agaves are planted in causes a really strong, sweet fruit. Um, so it's not only the soil, it's the, it's the elevation mm -hmm. of... And Avion, Avion and its mm. you know, partner is Altos. They're the only two brand tequilas that are distilled at that level, that elevation. Mm. So it's distilled at a particular level of elevation? Yeah, so it's, well? it's, also, it's grown in the distilleries right there. So, I mean, okay. obviously, it's, oh, it's yeah. more about the soil. Right. Um, but that's just where their distillery is gotcha. as well. They use the copper in the stills, so mm -hmm. that takes out a lot of impurities. Mm -hmm. They're using only the heart of the liquid, so when the distiller goes to bottle or, you know, remove the liquid from the still, he's removing the heads and tails of the liquid. So the first liquid to come out and the last to come out, okay. he's removing. So that's okay. taking out much more impurities. They're using stone ovens to roast mm -hmm. their agaves. So it's, it's all about the traditional methods, the quality of the soil, the generational family that owns it, that contributes to how it stands out. That's awesome. That's awesome. This has been a whole educational thing for me on <laughs> tequila. This is great. So now that we've got some of the, the formalities, what we're smoking and what we're drinking out of the way, you know, it's been several months since you've been on the show with us. How have you been? Over these last uh, three, four months since yeah. we've had you on. It's not bad. Um, it's obviously been weird with all the situation, all the bars closing. So my yeah. job is kind of uh, <laughs> sit at your computer and take trainings for, <laughs> for three months. Um, so there was a lot of day drinking at my house. Because uh, what else are you going to do? <laughs> well, that's what Nick does. <laughs> on my days off. On my days off, I can day drink. Mm -hmm. Starts at <laughs> starts at ten thirty. Doesn't end until 
Ten thirty. Yeah. Round the clock. Yeah. Round the clock. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. I mean, the life of a liquor rep is round the clock drinking. Yeah. So yeah. No, I I'm can, not a liquor rep. I know. I can get. <laughs> <laughs> certainly, certainly, you know, with the bars, you know, and, and restaurants having to uh, close for a while, that that really kind of threw a loop into things. And yet, at the same mm-hmm. time, the liquor stores are all deemed essential businesses yeah. Oh, yeah. and had to stay open. So were you still able to, to stay busy with, with your selling and marketing or stuff or, or without, without those bars and, and restaurants open, does that pretty much leave you, you know, dead in the water? So dead in the water because I, <laughs> <laughs> I made designated on-premise reps. So that's oh. just the bars. So I don't work the liquor stores. Okay. Okay. Um, so it was, it was a lot of, you know, busy work. Mm-hmm. Um, luckily, I live down by a river, so there was some <laughs> swimming <laughs> and drinking going on in the fires. So, I mean, I had a good time, but it was definitely hard to talk to owners and bar managers and bartenders who had lost their jobs or were struggling with their business. So I try, you try to support them any way that you can. The minute they open up, you go spend money. So it's a balancing act for sure. So how did the the company that you work for, that reps Avion and Jefferson and these other places, how, were they able to help you out as, as that was going on? So I didn't get laid off, if that's what you mean, mm. which was nice. So... A lot of people did, but I got to keep my job. Um, but there was also like support systems, you know, in case people had kids out of, you know, out of school and yeah. were watching them. So they were, my company was very supportive of everybody. And they even were distilling hand sanitizer yeah, and sending them out. A lot of distillers were doing that. Yeah. So they did, they did the best they could in the situation, I think. That's awesome. I'm, I'm glad to hear they took care of you. Yeah. That's important to all of us. Um, Nick, I want to follow up on oh. last week's challenge for those of you who, <laughs> you know, were somewhere else and haven't, you know, been living on this plane of existence and listened to last week's episode and not just blowing smoke. Uh, the would you rather question was. Would you rather give up eating with a fork or give up headphones for the rest of your life? And Nick did not hesitate. He said he would give up the fork. And Kendra Absolutely. gave him a look of shock. And Everybody that just, you know. <laughs> or the totally, biggest eater of the group. Yeah. <laughs> and so you <laughs> promised us that you would not eat with a fork. For the entire week. Oh Correct. Were you, what, what happened? Were you able to do that? I was. You I were. Was. I, I was able to eat everything with a spoon or a knife. Or your hands. Yeah. Or okay. so, oh, my hands. Or my hands. <laughs> including my hands. Barbecue <laughs> yesterday. Including the barbecue. So <laughs> I ate nothing. So yesterday I had barbecue, we smoked some meats, mm-hmm. and I ate the majority of that stuff with a spoon or my hands. Um, I actually sent you a video Saturday night of yeah. me, my, my father-in-law made me a bunch of steak with some chicken and I tried to eat it with a spoon and then I said, screw it. I threw the spoon away and just started eating it with my hands. So, but for the whole week, every meal was with a spoon or a knife. <laughs> Didn't use chopsticks. I didn't use chop. I can't use chopsticks. I don't Why can't you use work. chopsticks? Because I don't know how those things work. My fingers can't <laughs> I do that. They can't. They can't hold them. Issue. <laughs> That's cool. So there's a big coordination <laughs> issue there. I can't do it. So can we dial well, his wife in real quick and see if he can confirm this? I can. I can confirm for Nick that uh, he was good. He uh, sent pictures and videos. Every I sent some pictures. I tried to do it on the group chat, but because some people don't have iPhones. It kicks it out, it kicks it back, so. But I have some pictures of me eating shepherd's pie with a spoon. I sent the video to Danny yeah. of me yeah. eating steak with a spoon. Yeah. So I did get that. spoons all day. Even today, I even went today, because I was thinking this morning, I was like. Well, we were gonna ask, you know. I, well, I was thinking today, I was like, well, 
let me just finish off the week or let me finish off the day mm -hmm. with eating with a spoon. So I had pulled pork with coleslaw and I had it with a spoon and my wife was laughing at me and she said, you're ridiculous. But I had pretty much all day yard work today with headphones in. So I was using my headphones all day today and I was loving it. So, now, oh yeah. Now, Paul, <laughs> you work with Nick on Wednesdays, Thursdays and Fridays. Yeah. And you know Nick, you know, comes to work, and the, after he signs in, he usually eats. Eat for <laughs> <laughs> and then works a couple hours, goes and, you know, visits his other office, and then eats again. <laughs> and, you know, you know, working happens in between there, you know. There's some work Did you happen. see him at all, at any given time, eat with a fork? I Last have, week on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. I have not witnessed that. You have not witnessed that. But we don't know what he does in the office for 20 minutes at a time. Maybe he's, I, you know. I do not. I do not take her. I don't have a we phone with me at all. in that. <laughs> <laughs> so most of, the, most of the food that I ate was shepherd's pie, uh, chicken and broccoli. Mm -hmm. um, I had pulled pork yesterday and this morning. Um, I had steak. Which I ate with my hands, but most of the stuff was I was it was all you know my wife cooked the whole meal for the whole week of last week, so it was pretty easy for me to just pick up a spoon and eat with the spoon. Mm. But I held true to the challenge, though. I held true to the challenge. I wasn't gonna back down. So anyone could do a week, Nick. Oh, well, geez. For the rest of your life. <laughs> for the rest of my life. Yes, that that was the question. Can you give up a floor for the rest of your life? I think I could. I have that much self-discipline. <laughs> you have do. that much self-discipline. I think I have that much self-discipline to do the rest of my life with a spoon. Just a spoon. Alright. That sounds Ooh. like a cell phone. Yes, it does. <laughs> that might be Italian cell phone. Oh my god, I put on silent, it's my alarm. I've heard it doesn't turn it off when you turn it off. <laughs> it's, it's her alarm to let her know she needs to take a shot. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my. So now Talia, I never asked you what you thought of the cigar and the, the pairing there. What what's your take on it? This is one of the reasons we love having you on, is that you have smoked cigars too. Yep. And it Honestly, it's one of the things I love about not just blowing smoke. You know, we have cigar people on, we have pipe people on, but I don't know any other cigar or pipe podcast that has, you know, liquor reps on as well. Mm -hmm. it's, it's one of the things that makes us stand out. And when you can enjoy a cigar, you know, along with us and everything, that's even better. Absolutely. So tell us what you think about um, the pairing here and, and the cigar. So I don't know a lot about cigars. I do love to smoke them, usually while I'm drinking. So my only prerequisite is that it doesn't overtake the flavor of what I'm drinking. Right. And this right. doesn't. So it's good in my book. I think the sweetness in the tequila uh, really complements the earthiness and pepperiness mm -hmm. that's in the cigar. I, I think it's going very well. Um, I know that there is some fear and trepidation about that, probably because it was just tequila with Paul. But uh, <laughs> uh, I have to say that tequila is, is awesome. And uh, I think it's helping me to enjoy the cigar more than I would if it was just on its own. Oh, good. Which is what you want in a good mm -hmm. pairing, too. I think, it's, I think it's also helping to bring out a little bit more of the sweetness. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I noticed too, and when, whenever we do pairings, uh, the drinks that we have for the most part really kind of dial down the rest of the ale and smooths it out. Mm -hmm. And in this case, the tequila, because I think it has that, that pepper uh, flavor to it, it's actually helping to increase the pepper notes in the retro ale. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a white pepper. So on its own, it's a maybe a very strong spice. Right. The tequila, even though it's a, it finishes very clean, uh, there's enough pepper in there which is helping to really bring out more of that retrohale uh, pepper. Like I'm talking like more like a white pepper type. Does anyone notice that at all? Or? 
like a, a white pepper in the retro hat. I'll we'll find thing. out for you just yeah. a second. <laughs> you don't have to be quiet though. This is no. Yeah. I'm just stare at you while you do it. <laughs> I think the I think the cigars the the pairing the, the drink is allowing the cigar to open up a little bit more. Mm-hmm. As I had the cigar when we first got it in, and I didn't find it as flavorful. Mm-hmm. Um, with the tequila and finding the cigar, oh, yeah. a little bit more, a little bit more peppery. The the San Andreas is kind of coming through a little bit more. You get the the earth. You get the spice. The sweetness more than likely because of the tequila, the sweetness in the cigar is coming through a lot more in the palate. And it's very nice. It's not my top pick of Rocky Patel, but I think it's a good cigar. Okay. That's fair. That's fair enough. Um, you know, for Pastor Padron's cigar confession, I wanted to share something that happened last week. I had some... Uh, <clears throat> guys come into the lounge and and they had their you know this is a BYOB lounge here in Hookset they brought their um, bottle of scotch with them and everything and had some cigars and and um, when it was all over they insisted on cleaning everything up that's nice not only taking not only taking their cups and their, their stuff but they wanted to actually wipe out the ashtray they asked me, where do I go to, to clean this up? We don't want to leave the mess here. And, you know, I told them they didn't have to do it. That's why I was here and everything. They're like, no, no, no. We made a mess. We want to clean it up. We nice. It. And that was really, really respectful. And, you know, I think when, you know, they understand that when you come to a place like Twins that has a lounge where you're allowed to sit, and you're allowed to enjoy the music, the television, you're allowed to enjoy a drink or whatever. Um, And when you respect that space by helping keeping it clean, it goes a long way, not only for the the guys who are working the shop, but also for the people who are there. Yeah. You know? Lead by example. And so, you know, kudos to them. I, I would call them out by name, but I have not seen them before. Uh, so I don't, I don't have, they weren't regulars. <laughs> they, they if only the us. regulars would take that hint. Three <laughs> <laughs> young guys? No. No? No. It was three, but they were not young. I mean, they were in their 30s, early yeah. 40s. Yeah. Yeah. Is that young to you, Dave? Young guys are now in their 30s? Younger than me. Well, yeah. No. I mean, by age. But yeah, they've been coming in for a while. But while you're ahead, take them with try to you. Oh my goodness! Now I have to tell you, um, it seemed like you know for the last several years, Mexican San Andreas has been uh, more and more coming out on yeah. cigars, especially TAA uh, releases. Um, Rocky Patel makes a regular San Andreas mm-hmm. cigar, the uh, Vintage 2006. I smoked that a little bit uh, before we started. I wanted to be able to talk a little bit about the differences between this and that cigar. Um, the Vintage 2006 <coughs> San Andreas cigar by Rocky Patel is uh, very, very smooth. Compared, compared to this, a lot less pepper. It's a lot more refined, if you can say that. Um, <clears throat> this is a lot more earthy, a lot more, um, uh, you know, it's got a lot more pepper to it. And yet at the same time, it's n- not at all my favorite uh, San Andreas cigar. Um, I think my, you know, I, my go-to San Andreas cigar is the uh, uh, Neanderthal by Roman Craft. Um, that has a ton of flavor to it that's just dreamy. Ooh, I love that cigar. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I think this cigar is good. Yep. It's been burning well. Uh, the construction is good. The draw is fine, you know. But I, I think it's, I think it's 
just that. I think it's a good cigar. Yeah, I agree. What, what, Paul? What, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's good. I think it's uh, it's one of Rocky's better ones. Um, it's uh, I'm not a huge Rocky Patel uh, smoker, but uh, it's uh, the ones I've had. This is definitely going to be on the, on the upper echelon uh, of them. But uh, as far as the San Andreas, I do agree with you, Dan. Uh, it's not my favorite. You know, you know what my favorite is is the Cigar Privé from Illusioni. Cigar um, Privé. That's got yeah. a lot more. Uh, richness to it, you know, earthy cocoa, cedar notes, which I really like. I love the Neanderthal as well. Um, but this is a little lighter uh, in terms of flavor and body. I'm going to say it's a medium smoke. Um, I do get the earth and pepper. Uh, the retrohale is, it, but the tequila is really, really uh, peppery. And, uh, but yeah, overall, it's not a bad cigar. Hmm. Potion Master. Potion Master. What do you think about all this stuff? I don't expect you to, you know, but what do you think about your cigar the pairing? Are you still smoking it? No, you put it down. Well, I've already had to relight it once and it went out again, so I, I, I gave up. Nick can smoke it on the way home. All right. <laughs> That's what she, I do. If she doesn't forget it and leave it here. <laughs> Nick always takes it. No, not always. Not always. Because I did you it last forget. week. I did it last week because you had the whole cigar there. <laughs> I wasn't going to let it All right, go. guys. I'm not a big smoker. I smoked two cigars on Saturday. So. That's good. Mm. Good for yeah. you. That's awesome. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, overall, it, I think it's a wonderful pairing. Mm. And, you know, what I'm hearing from you guys is that um, the, the tequila is really helping you enjoy the cigar more than you would on its own. Yeah. So I think that Talia and I did a good job with, you know, presenting to you this wonderful spirit to enjoy. And, um, yeah, I think that the cigar is, you know, earthy, but, you know, an easy smoke for me for not being a big smoker. And that's, you know, what I appreciate. I like being on the show, but I don't like having, you know, a, a blast of... <laughs> still smooth and you know I think that the notes that I'm getting are not overpowering and the tequila complements it so um, overall um, a good good option for tonight mm -hmm. what do you think Talia can I just say I agree yes <laughs> you can and Dave I should I should ask you you'll feel left out if I don't ask Aww. Um, to me, yeah, all right, now it's time for <laughs> it. almost feels like a toned down, unstolen valor to me. I get that same kind of peppercorny, um, earthy taste from it, but it's just, it's like a medium where I think the unstolen valor was like a medium plus. Mm -hmm. um, but to me, in my palate, I really like it. I think the pairing is bringing out a lot of the sweetness in the cigar. Um, and I, I'm enjoying it very much. Very good. All right. Well, that's the end of our first half of the show here. We'll be back in just a few minutes, and we're going to get into our blind pipe tasting next. So don't go anywhere. We'll Top off some glasses. <laughs> All right, everybody. We're back. Talia had to head out, so it's just the five of us here. And uh, we are doing our blind pipe tasting. And let me tell you something. Um, this Saturday, uh, July 11th, is Pipe Club at the uh, Twins in Londonderry. And we're going to be starting a blind taste challenge there. And it, so it was kind of funny that last week on the show, Mark Mormar challenged us to do a blind tasting yeah. on the podcast. And uh, knowing that I was actually going to be doing this at our pipe club uh, for the next number of months, <clears throat> I thought it would be a great lead in for that. So what we have tonight are two pipe tobaccos. You wanna hand me that bag there? We have blend one and blend two. These are similar blends. And they are both blends that we carry at Twins. Other than that, I'm not going to say anything else about what they are. 
And what I want us to do tonight is to smoke through a little bit of each. If you have multiple pipes, some people are going to be smoking them both at once. Uh, two of us, Paul and Kendra, have... Well, no, Kendra, Kendra has the two pipes. I have two pipes. Paul's the only loner. Paul's going to be smoking them back to back. The rest of us are going to be smoking them side to side, side by side. And uh, we're going to experience um, what it's like to smoke tobacco that you have no idea what the brand is, what the, um, or even what the blend is. And so what I want everybody to do is to um, grade the tobacco based on, you know, its appearance, its aroma, its taste, and the performance in your pipe. You know, did you have to relight it every five seconds or did it burn very well all the way down? And at the end of the show, I will reveal what it is that you guys have been smoking. But I, I think this is a really interesting experience, experiment about um, that will allow you to really develop your palate. And, you know, I don't know, we might be surprised about what ends up being the uh, favorite tobacco here tonight. Mm. So I have in my... Uh, uh, Savinelli Impero here, the, my 920. I have pipe tobacco blend number one, and I'm going to light that up right now. Paul, I believe you have number one in that pipe right now. What are you picking up off of that? Well, uh, immediately I'm getting a lot of dried fruit, so obviously mm -hmm. Virginia is the predominant tobacco. Um, maybe just a little bit of spice. Uh, the Retro Hill is very, very smooth spice. Um, but that's pretty much it right now. Okay. Now, Kendra, I know that this was a hard thing for you because you didn't know exactly what we were doing. And so when you called today to say, what the heck am I supposed to make with this? We don't know what we're having. Mm -hmm. You know, I told you kind of the body of the tobacco. And uh, so what did you do for a drink for this tonight? So, because I didn't know what we would be smoking, I just stayed with the tequila theme and I made a margarita that's on our seasonal menu right now. It's a blood orange margarita. So, the tequila is, the, is what we use in our well. It's called Micampo. And that and a blood orange liqueur, a pineapple syrup, and just a little bit of color from a little half a splash of cranberry and it topped with some seltzer. I like it. Tasty, ah. smooth, I like sweet. It. Pulling out a lot more of the Virginias from the tobacco, but I, I think it's a great for so far. Don't look. you love tequila night, Paul? I am. You're turning me into a tequila fan. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> That's it. It's going to look for the next best thing in tequila now. All right. So, Nick, what's, what's your first thoughts on what are you smoking? Number one or number two? No, I'm going number one. I'm going in order. Okay. So, number one. Number one. What are you what are you picking up there? Sweet. 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 Earthy. Spice on the retro. And I'm getting this woody, this woody note in there that mm -hmm. reminds me of either Haunted Bookshop or one of GLP's blends that you always carry. And I can't, <laughs> and I can't, I can't narrow it down because you have Burberry Coast, you have Cumbies, uh, which is Cumberland, um, and you have Haddo's. And it's definitely not Haddo's because Haddo's for me is very rich. Um, uh, with the Virginias, and it's got some spice, and it's a lot heavier than this type of tobacco. So for me, I'm thinking it's got to be either one or the other, which is Cumbies. What? <laughs> which is Cumbies. Cumbies? Cumbies, or, or maybe Haunted Bookshop. So weird you said that, because my first thought was Haunted Bookshop, and I don't know anything that about would, any of this. That would. That would. <laughs> That, the, the, for me, that, that woody, spicy note. The show. Yeah, she's 
the woody, spicy note that I'm getting in there, and I get a little in the Hunts Bookshelf, I'm getting a little bit of the sweetness too, but okay. with that woody spiciness that's in there, thinking either, excuse me, either Cumberland or Hunts Bookshelf. So it's not Granite State. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not Granite State. No, for those as soon as the woodiness, Dan right. took out all the little Cavendish pieces. Yeah. And, you know, to throw for those out. of you yeah. who are not uh, uh, at, you know, Twins, Twins customers, customers, Granite State for us is, is Lane One Q. Um, and so no, it is not. It's not the aromatic. Uh, there's oh, not nothing the aromatic in here about this. Um, I know that. Uh, um, Rod, uh, in the first half of the show, I didn't see it until after it was over. He asked what the price difference was between the uh, uh, Rocky Patel Vintage 2006 San Andreas and the um, TAA that we smoked in the first half of the show. And uh, the answer to that question is the TAA is more expensive by about $3. Um, you can get the vintage cigars for, you know, um, just under nine to nine, ten dollars, I think, a stick, and the um, uh, TAA Exclusivo goes for twelve fifty. Correct. Correct. Twelve fifty. So it's a couple three dollars cheaper depending on the size. That answers that question there. Dave, what are you picking up over there? You're a, a pipe whore. Do you, do you know what you're uh, smoking there? Well, it's definitely got some Virginia in it because of the dried fruit. Uh, it's got this nice peppery retro ale. Hmm. I don't think I'm going to make a guess yet. It's very, I think it's more of a, a mild tobacco though. More of a mild tobacco. Yeah. Now, Kendra, you've got... The drink is kind of... Really messing with it. <laughs> it's really messing with it. Kendra, what do you think? You're smoking number one in your little honey pipe there. What do you call that pipe? The honey badger? The honey badger. You got you got pipe tobacco number one in the honey badger. What uh, what are you thinking? Um how do you think it goes with the drink? It it's it goes okay. It's mm. not like uh, it's not like a slam dunk or anything. Yeah, that, this doesn't go against you because no, you have no it's idea your fault. what it was. You have no <laughs> idea what it was. It yeah. wouldn't be fair. Yeah. I'm enjoying the drink. I think the drink is really, really good. Are you enjoying it with the tobacco? It, it is. And it actually, yeah. I think it's actually making the tobacco a little bit more intense. Mm. In what way? Well, I don't. And again, what is this? What is the rim again? It's a Tajin rim. It's chili lime. That's okay. That's probably what's making yeah. the tobacco more intense. And I'm, I'm picking up those flavors, and it's really, it's, mm. it's. it's sitting on my palate and it's when I draw in the tobacco it's making it a lot more intense than it was should be. You think that the woody notes of the the tobacco is kind of uh getting thrown off by the orange? I don't know. I don't think so. No. I don't think the orange is throwing it off. No. <clears throat> I think the initial shock of the spice on the rim you know, and the, and the liminess, that could that yeah. could throw off some, because yeah. those flavors are so intense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But once that's a little bit out of the way, because you keep going back to the drink. <laughs> yeah. The, the drink, drink is <laughs> so refreshing. The drink is so It's very refreshing. refreshing, and I think I think the, the orange in there, you know, does bring out some of the stuff in the uh, tobacco here. Mm. I think it's, it's making it a little bit more sweeter. A little bit more sweeter? Yeah, the tobacco with the with the citrus that you're getting from the drink. Mm. I think the, the sweetness is coming through on the tobacco a little bit more. But for me, the, the spicy rim is bringing out a little bit more of the woody notes that are in this tobacco that I'm getting. I'm getting that like a, right, right at the end, kind of getting that woodiness in that tobacco. That's why I was saying uh, the, the two tobaccos, that's what I get from that, is that woody spiciness. So, this Saturday at Pipe Club, we're going to be doing something along this line. And let me tell you a little bit about what we're doing. Uh, we're going to be, over time, taking four Virginia blends, 
four Virginia Perique blends, four Burley blends, and four English blends. And we're going to be smoking those in a bracketed style tournament. And uh, the winners of each round will go against the winners of the, the following rounds, starting with uh, uh, those families. So the, the round one will be, um, uh, it, I still haven't decided whether we're gonna do Virginia's or Virginia Periques this Saturday. Mm. Really kind of depends on what's, what's there. Right. As we might, we might need to have some, some extra tobacco brought in in order for us to do this. But we would, let's, let's say it's Virginia's. Round one would be Virginia number one and Virginia number two. And then round two would be Virginia number three and Virginia number four. And the winner of each of those would then go off against each other. And that winner would then go off against the winner of the Virginia Perique or the Burley or the um, uh, English blends that we're going to do. And we're going to do that in that, in that uh, March Madness kind of style there. And in the end, we're going to come up with the Pipe Club Tobacco of the Year. By the time we finish doing this, and if you do two rounds at a time, that's four bowls of pipe tobacco. That's a lot of smoking to do at a time. It's going to take till next May for us to do it with the pipe, with the pipe shows and special events that we have in there in between. So... Next May, which is our second anniversary as a Pipe Club, we will be announcing our uh, Pipe Tobacco of the Year. And who knows, we might do this again. People are really excited about it that, that I've talked to. It'll be real interesting to see what happens this Saturday. It's going to be a lot of fun. So um, at this point, I think what I would want to do is to switch if you haven't done so already, and light up <coughs> pipe tobacco number two. Yep. <clears throat> now, for those of us with multiple pipes, we can go back and forth if we want and see if we can, you know, what differences we taste, which one we like better, which is performing a little bit better. But again, the only thing I'm going to tell you about these is the blends are similar. Huh. And I'm purposely not giving my opinions on things because I'm the only person here who knows what's in the bags. Nick, what differences are you picking up? Um, you light that up right away. I th for me, it's a lot like I'm getting straight burly. Straight what? Burly. Burly. Yeah. Again, I just lit it up, so come back to me later. <laughs> <laughs> it's a come back to me later episode. Oh my goodness. Dave, have you lit up the second one yet? Hmm. The Dave grunt <laughs> signifies <laughs> the word yes, I have in English. Wow. Again, Virginia's. Um, I think the. Uh, hmm. The. Uh, <laughs> The retro hail is not quite as spicy as the last one. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is a, a definitely a milder uh, smoke than number one. Milder, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, Kendra, I'm really interested in what you think because you don't have the experience with things as uh, most of us do. So I think the differences might actually be more, you know, apparent to you. I like number two better. Mm -hmm. um, number one kind of had like a sharp sharpness to it that 
it wasn't bad, but mm-hmm. but number two has a little bit more like raisin or or plum to it, um, not as much in that in the woody characteristics. Um, I haven't tried it the drink yet, <laughs> but my vote is number two. Oh, Kendra so, says number two. So number two, <laughs> I'm not getting really the 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 uh, the, uh, the dried fruit from the Virginia's as much as the first one. Mm-hmm. I think you're right. It's a little bit more of a, a woody character to this. Um, maybe it is burly. I, I, I believe there's definitely some burly in this one. What do you think was in the first one? It, to me, it was it was either straight Virginia or Virginia burly, but the Virginia was the pronounced tobacco, mm-hmm. or or it was a Virginia perique, and maybe the perique was blended enough so that it wasn't as prominent. Uh, but it's either one of those two. It wasn't, it wasn't straight Virginia, it was something else. Something with Virginia. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's either going to be Burley or Parique. This one, the Virginia's on is on his, uh, on his strong. Mm-hmm. Nick, have you had a chance to actually think mm. between your drinking? <laughs> well, I'm done. I'm done. Oh, you're done with the drink. I'm done the margarita. Oh, God. <laughs> you gotta give, it, you gotta give it some chance for the second one, I know, but it was so good, I couldn't stop drinking it. What do you want me to do? All right, here we go. Why don't you tell me what you think about number two? <laughs> I'm getting a deep, rich fruitiness in there, not as pronounced as the first one. The first one was really fruit forward, or Virginia forward, but definitely getting some earthy, woody, spicy notes out of this one. Really come through on the palate. Very smooth. Um, I would have to agree with Dave on that it's more of a medium body than the first one. The first one was going to be light, yep. light medium, yep. if that. But this one is straight medium body. Um, getting some, you know, the, the deep, rich, fruity flavors in there. And the woody spice is definitely coming through at the end. All right. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say the first one was a Virginia Burley. This is a Burley Virginia. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> makes no sense, but in, in other we'll words, it. the first one had the Virginias as the prominent tobacco. This one, the second one, the Burleys are the prominent one. Yeah. Right. Virginias okay. are playing a background supporting role. Hmm. Does that make sense? That makes sense to me. We've well. said that a hundred times on this podcast. Yes, I have. Okay. Yes. So it's not as I totally understand. Sense. Mm. <laughs> okay. Any guesses as to what this might be? No. Maybe oh, shipyard. So many. I'm. I'm, I'm lost. <laughs> so many that I'm lost. <laughs> That's so beautiful. I'd say I'd say I have so many tobaccos now that I'm lost. <laughs> Don't Danny. know what it could be. Danny. Yeah. What is I'd that? say I'd say uh Portsmouth. You think Portsmouth should be right? Maybe. Okay. Because with the the cuts are different. This one on number two, you have a more of a, a flake or a ribbon. Is that number two? This is number That's number yeah. two. Um, <laughs> now, Portsmouth Shipyard is what we call Stokeby Luxury Navy Flake. Right. Because if you go anywhere else and ask for Portsmouth Shipyard, they're going to look at you and go, What? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we call Peter Stokeby's Luxury Navy Flake. I think the first one is Twins, Virginia. You think the first one is Twins, Virginia, that's which a, is that's a bold MV statement. MV one thousand, which is Lane's uh, Virginia blend there. Okay. How do you think the second uh, tobacco goes with the the margarita, Kendra? Better. Better. <laughs> <laughs> It goes better than. Uh, I don't know. I can't keep the pipe lit, so I, I can't keep anything lit tonight. I can't keep the cigar lit. I can't keep it the pipe lit. I can't. Lit. I don't know what the problem I'm is. I'm just lit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. Uh, this 
meds ain't working. Let's see what this torch does. <laughs> well, I had to because you're, on fire. Your, lighter, your lighter is too confusing to me. So. <laughs> After a couple glasses of tequila, that's probably true. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think the pairing on the second one, it feels a little bit more balanced. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have the, the sharpness that first one was giving me where... The, the orange flavor to me just kind of was out of place. I don't know. Okay, yeah. I think the just, second just pipe tobacco is smoother to me. Mm. Would you agree with Kendra? The second pipe tobacco is smoother? I would say the first one was smoother. Yeah, smoother and, and sweeter. Yeah, I agree with Paul on that one. And I wasn't getting any sweetness from the first one. There was some in there. So a lot more of the Virginias. Yeah. This one's more earthy, woody, spicy. You definitely get some of the sweetness, but it's more of a, like it plays a second part in there. Um, so maybe, medium. maybe this, the spiciness is like, it's complimenting the margarita more for me because of the, the rim and everything. Right. Yeah. Yep. I agree with that. Hmm. I'm trying not to get that, uh, that that room because it's it, it that is spicy is throwing me off. Mm. Mm. I love it. Okay. Of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. It's gone. It's good as gone, baby. <laughs> David. Mm. Quit. <laughs> and tell us in words what you think. Do we need a uh, translator? Do we need to go yeah. to Google Translate to translate? I think number two is smoother. Um, that's all I got right now. <laughs> See, me and Dave are on the same page. Well, the drink is just, it's, it's good with both of them, but the, uh, the rim is just, it's kind of, it's making it really hard for me to pick things out. Are you sure? Or is it the two glasses of tequila that you had? Oh, boy. I, I <laughs> had made it hard for you to pick anything out. That's why I put the rim on there just to confuse you guys. Damn. Just to good. throw you off. She's good. She's I, like, I, I, make it easy I, for us. No. Nope. I knew the strategy tonight. Mm -hmm. She's good. Mm -hmm. Mm. All right. Well, while we're smoking here, Paul, you have some industry news for us tonight. You want to tell us about what uh, is going on in the uh, tobacco world? I certainly will. Uh -oh. Let me throw on my specs. Here come the multi-focal lenses. Sit <laughs> 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 down, we doing this all night. <laughs> yeah. So, the Premium Cigar Association furloughs its staff. Oh, what? Oh, Say what? And ends lobbying contracts amid financial shortfall. The Premium Cigar Association has informed its staff that they will be furloughed as the organization navigates through its new financial situation. Scott Pierce, the organization's executive director, said that the furlough would begin July 15th and would cover the entire staff, including himself. The organization is stressing that the furlough was temporary, though it didn't provide a timeline as to when it might end. The PCA will rely on its voluntary boards to deal with the critical functions of the organization during the furlough. In a conference call with the media, Pierce indicated that the financial constraints would impact the legal fight against the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. The PCA, along with two other groups, the Cigar Association of America and the Cigar Rights of America, filed suit against the agency over its regulations of cigars and pipes. Over the last month, the PCA has been trying to figure out how to run its operation in the face of an expected massive revenue shortfall. In May, the 2020 PCA Convention and Trade Show was canceled due to the coronavirus. This was certain to have major financial impacts for the organization given the trade show has provided at least 70% and likely a much greater percentage of the organization's revenue in prior years. Even if the trade show had happened, this year's show was likely to generate less revenue than in previous years. Back in January, four of the largest trade show exhibitors, Altidus, Davidoff, Drew Estate, and General Cigar announced they would not be attending the 2020 trade show. These four companies alone accounted for over 18% of the trade show floor and contributed hundreds, if not a million dollars to the organization. Hundreds, if not a million? Hundreds, if not one million dollars. Hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands. Excuse me, yes. hundreds of thousands, if not one million dollars. <laughs> That's a big jump. That's a big jump. 
The news of the furloughs <laughs> comes as the PCA informed its contracted lobbyists last month that it would not be it would be ending their contracts effective July first. He said the organization would deploy lobbying resources in critical areas going forward. <coughs> so, uh, so the PCA well, is a little bit of trouble right now. They're in a little bit of trouble, and and you know we we knew that things were going to be different because the the trade show is what their major source of income was, yeah. you know, but it's, it's, uh, very interesting to me that, uh, everybody's been put on furlough and now it's all going to be, uh, volunteer groups that are going to be running it. Mm -hmm. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with PCA and, um, what happens as far as it's, uh, influence uh, in the industry goes this this coming year. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Well, aside from coming out with new product, which is a which is what they use the PCA and the the, the old IPCPR to do, they would come out with uh, and show off their new cigars mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully have people who would buy into that. What we've noticed in Twins is a lot of these reps are taking what they would normally give for deals mm -hmm. during the PCA and coming to us and offering them. Right. So I think it, it, it will be a, a major change going forward in terms of how they interact with the retailers. I don't, I don't know if the, the, the trade, I mean, you, you hear different things. You hear some of these uh, cigar manufacturers saying that next year is going to be a much bigger year. Everyone wants to go. They didn't go this year. But I think it's going to be a major shift in terms of how the retailers get these products. Yeah, I, I just because of the expense. I think the the one of the one of the key things that the PCA offers is the ability to build relationships with other uh, brick and mortar stores and with the retailers that are out there to be actual to be able to meet face to face. And and uh, build those relationships is, is really really important, um, and something ha it's it's one thing to do these Zoom meetings or to you know be doing things online with people. It's another thing to go to an event and even if you're not talking with everybody to see you know uh, thousands and thousands of people that are in your industry that are pro you and what you're doing there's there's a, a, a magic that happens in that atmosphere that you just can't get uh in other ways and and so i i think you know the need for getting together in a in, in a um something like a trade show that the pca was doing i, th I think is going to continue to be necessary um, and yet, you know, at the same time, while they were providing that very important part of uh, business for all of us, um, it, I know that it is very expensive to go. And it's a very expensive time of year to go. And it's very expensive as far as, especially here in New England, I can't speak for the rest of the country, <clears throat> but... You know, July and August, those are the prime months of our business. And, uh, uh, you know, a lot of shops don't have multiple staff. You know, they would have to close to go to the trade show because they don't have the staff there to, to run it. And then it's a lot of money to get there. It's a lot of money to, to uh, have a booth if you want a booth there. Mm -hmm. um, it's so... The fact that these um, companies are now offering the uh, deals that they would have offered at the trade show through the internet or through local reps, you know, one has to wonder, you know, how that's going to affect things in the future. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I guess we'll wait and see what's going on with that. Mm -hmm. um, Kendra, I noticed you finished your margarita and you're back to the uh, tequila. Finish yet though. I'm just doing a little switcheroo. A little switcheroo. <laughs> <laughs> Options are good. Her weekend continues. Her weekend continues. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I see my, my brother chimed in. Hey, Dylan. Hmm. Hi, Dylan. Was it a good uh, Was it a good Fourth of July for you, Kendra? Um, sure. <laughs> sure. To say the least. <laughs> to say the least. Oh, stop making fun of me. I'm not making fun of you. I'm just trying okay. to figure out if you remember the Fourth of July. July. I I had I was excited to have the weekend off and. Yeah. Well, you deserved it. You, I had a good had, time. You had to work the whole week before because. Kimber needed the week off. It's only <laughs> fair that you get the 4th of July weekend yeah. off. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That I'm is sure. right, Dan. Amen. I'm putting Amen my foot Kimber. down. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. <clears throat> so my 4th of July weekend started with my septic system alarm going off. And uh, um, that meant us having to stop showering, doing laundry, doing the dishes, you know, and I had, and here's what made it really rough. I had just made my chili. Oh. So it was a shit show in your it house. It was a <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it was. No. It was. So, you know, we're looking for restaurants that are open, you know, where can we go and take a crap, you know, and stuff <laughs> like that. And it was, it was, it was bad. But things today, they've all been worked out and everything's back to normal and up and running. And thank God for that. But uh, what a what a way to start the Fourth of July weekend having your septic system alarm go off. Yeah, what does That's that sound like, really? <laughs> what does it sound like? It sounds like an alarm going off. It sounds like it's like an alarm. It doesn't stop. You guys have an alarm for that? Well, yeah. you see, there's in the way it's set up in our yard. There's a this, there's the septic tank, and then there's a a tank next to it where a lot of the the water, you know, liquid goes to, and because it's down lower than where the leaching field is, yes. it gets pumped out there. Okay. And kind of like in your toilet tank, you know, it's got a float in there, and, and uh, when that float rises up to a certain level, then the pump turns on and it pumps out the water. Well, it turned out that that float had been uh, had something fall on it oh. and was keeping it depressed. That's so the water levels rising and rising and rising. We had a lot of rain, you know, the week before too. So water's coming in from, you know, into the leaching field out there that, and well, I don't have to go into all that, but suffice it to say that once we figured out what was causing the problem and we were able to, you know, free the, free the float, Everything started to work just fine, and you know what could have been a thousand dollar fix ended up being just you know open things up, pull this, and free the thing up, and everything started to work. So thank the good Lord Almighty. Really. Mm. That was that was a big thing. The biggest takeaway here is that you were driving around looking for restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> And I live in Massachusetts, so that was really hard. Oh, I guess yeah. I'll just go to Twins. He was just waiting for me. Hey, buddy. What are you here for? Are you on vacation? Well, yeah. Uh, I'm actually going to go. I was in the neighborhood. <laughs> you know, I was in the neighborhood, and yeah. I decided to come by. Yeah. <laughs> Is that why you stopped by? Hey, yeah. hey, Paul. Uh, I'm good. Uh, I'll be right back. <laughs> I got to do this transfer here. Uh, <laughs> For uh, my yeah, story. transfer. Oh, that's what I'm gonna do. A transfer. <laughs> <laughs> now, Dave, did you do anything for the fourth? I watched Independence Day with the boys. You watched the Independence Day marathon. Both no, movies. Just, just uh, no, I only went myself, so we just watched it. But not. Is that something you do every every Fourth of July? Is watch yeah. Independence Day. I watch Independence Day on Fourth of July. Watch Die Hard at Christmas. Yep. There you go. Because Die Hard is a Christmas mm -hmm. movie. Mm -hmm. Where is that? Where is that? Uh, that statement from? Who said their favorite Christmas movie is Die Hard? Does that sound familiar? Die Hard is considered to be a Christmas no, movie. No, it is not. It is. I, yeah. I, agree, I agree with you, Kendra. I do not think Die Hard is a Christmas movie, and yet it is seen by many people as being a. Christmas movie. You will you will see it on the shelves during Christmas every time. Yeah. Every time. Every time. Every time. It's one of my. Every Christmas is that what you mean, Dave? Yep. <laughs> hmm. 
Nick, what about you? What did you do on uh, the 4th of July? I worked uh, with you. Yes, you worked with me, yes. I worked with you. Mm-hmm. And how was that? Uh, huh? And how was that? Busy? It was good and, until like 6 o'clock when nobody was coming in. <clears throat> now, I left right before 6 o'clock. You did, yeah. What happened after 6 o'clock? I probably saw six people. I was one of them. <laughs> six to nine, yeah, Dave came in. Of course, Dave came in. He was probably looking for a place to dump, too. <laughs> um, but I worked and, you know, didn't see that many people. How was it up at the bar? Uh, it was pretty slow. Yeah? Yeah, it was pretty slow. Mm-hmm. It was going to be slow. But it's 4th of July. After 6 o'clock, everybody's grilling and drinking. Nobody wants to go out. Fireworks were going off when I left. And then from there, I went to my in-law's house, and that's where I sent you uh, the video of me that's eating right. steak with a spoon. That's right. Oh, my gosh. That's, 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 I should tell you, the 4th of July, you know, when fireworks were going off, and, of course, a lot of towns weren't doing it, so yep. everybody was doing it. Right. Yep. My daughter, Anna, has a service dog, Echo. He's a great little uh, golden retriever. Let me tell you something. That dog don't like thunder, and he doesn't like fireworks. Yep. So he was... Sticking his head under things, he was welping and everything. He was scared out of his freaking mind. That was the hardest two hours of his life between eight and ten on Saturday. That's it. <laughs> was only two hours with you, really? Well, I mean, by then most of it was wow. over. Then every yeah. once in a while, it sounded like somebody was firing a shotgun. Where I lived, it was going on well past midnight. For really? Like four hours. No, it wasn't yeah. that late. Yeah, I mean, it was like I mean, I I stepped out of where I live. So I live across the street from a uh, BAE uh, facility and mm-hmm. across the parking lot, there was someone blowing off fireworks like it was a professional display mm-hmm. for hours. It was just, I mean, it was, it was great. You didn't, you didn't have to go anywhere to see those, those fireworks going off in the sky one after the other, but it kept going on and on and on until well past midnight. Mm-hmm. Someone was spending some serious money putting them on, but... It was, uh, didn't have to go anywhere for it. Did you do anything special for the board? No, my, uh, my girlfriend actually, uh, did a last minute trip to see her father down in Pennsylvania who was in a rehab. He had a little bit of a medical issue, so, uh, she left me and Fletch and the two cats. Fletch? Fletch my dog, Fletch. And, uh, I just had a really nice, quiet, uh, 4th of July. It's really Except nice. for the night. Except for the night. From 8 to midnight plus, it was, uh... Cast one one way, flesh one another. <laughs> <laughs> so it was uh, it was interesting. All right, now Kendra has already made her pick. She has picked pipe tobacco number two as her favorite of the two tobaccos. Dave, what is your favorite of the two? I'm gonna have to go with number one. Well, you're gonna go with number one. Yep. How dare you? Mm-hmm. Why? I like the fruitiness better. It's more Virginia Ford, and that's my bag, baby. Okay. Nick? Two. Two. All day. It's medium body. I do enjoy that woody earthiness in there with the spice. Mm-hmm. And then the, the sweetness comes right after. And two is going to be my pick of the night. Do you have any idea what number two might be? I'm probably still going to go to Portsmouth. What, what is it, MV1000 or something like that? No. Portsmouth is um, Luxury Navy Flake. Luxury Navy Flake. My apologies. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's it's going to go with Port, uh, Portsmouth Shipyard. I'm not gonna... Okay, Paul. I like number one better. Number one better. Yeah. It was, uh, I guess, like David said, it was a little bit more uh, fruit forward. Uh, those Virginias really stood out. Um, there's something else there. Like I said, I'm going to say it was more of a burly type. So as far as what it is, I... I'd just be guessing. I really have no idea. All right. I really couldn't even tell you. Dave, do you have any idea what it might be? I I want to say it's the Twins, Virginia. I'm throwing it out there. Yeah. Are you going to reveal it? Yes. Oh. I'm going to reveal it right now. Yes. Number yes. one. Number yes. one is, drum roll was please, Cornell and Deals Bayou Morning. No snacks. Which is a Virginia Perique blend, 25% Perique. Okay. Whoa. Which we sell in bulk at 
between the smokes. Why are you mourning, huh? So, wow. I was, so I was half right. There was Virginia in it, yes. <laughs> There's like Virginia in everything, Paul. You could have been writing like a thousand. I, as as I said, Nick, I was half right. Mm-hmm. It's true. It's okay. true. So, what's, what's the, the second, second one? Retro ale. That is made up of uh, now Bayou Morning is red, and bright Virginias, and Perique. And okay. Perique is twenty five percent of that blend. Right. Okay. Now the other one, uh, blend number two is GLP's Stonehenge Flake. Ah. Oh. And that is uh, a mix of um, Burley, yeah, Paul's Virginia, right. and Perique. Paul was right. So was Paul was right. Paul was right. Yep. So I there, was, there was Burley in that one. Woo! These Ooh. were both Virginia Perique blends. Okay, that's what was similar about them. Okay, there is a, a little bit of a cocoa topping, which adds to the sweetness that um, Kendra really picked up on. Okay, so, but isn't that interesting? Yes, you know, yeah. So we split right down the middle. You guys split right down the middle with what you liked. The stuff that you can get for seven bucks for two ounces versus yeah. the GLPs. For uh, thirteen fifty for a ten, but we all know you had good taste, Kendra. Oh, I picked the more expensive one. She did. Nice. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yep, Stonehenge Flake was number two. Now, what was it like? Now that you, now we've uh, had both of those on the show, we sell both of them in the store. Mm-hmm. Are you surprised by any of that? I'm not. I mean, again, I, I guess that I, I just couldn't tell you. Except, I, I don't think I've had either one yet. Mm-hmm. Well, we've done them both on the show, so yeah. you can do that. Yeah. 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 Liar! <laughs> Lies! <laughs> Lies! It, it, I mean, I was lost, and I really had no idea what we were smoking. But mm-hmm. I, I did like the whole idea of the blind test because it mm-hmm. did give a, a, a chance for us to be able to smoke one after the other. And clearly, like I was saying, the first one was a Virginia-based tobacco. Yes. The second one, I could tell right away that, that there was Virginia in there, but it was not the pronounced one. Not the, right. Not the uh, the uh, uh, Virginia Burley and the Burley, Perique. the Burley Virginia. I, the Perique, I missed that one, but <laughs> and I like Perique, but I clearly yes. was. Uh, well, you I, do because you picked number one. Yeah. And that had. That has a serious amount of Perique in it. It was a Perique lover's blend. I said it was Virginia for a while. Yeah, you did. <laughs> so we have to work on some stuff still. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Go back to taste the school. Now, uh, yeah. last last thing for tonight. Uh, the would you rather question. Oh. The would you rather question. Kendra. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather spend the rest of your life with a sailboat as your home Ooh. or with an RV as Holy your home? moly. Wow. Sailboat. As long as there was liquor on it, I really don't care which. No, I, I, I think, think definitely, definitely the RV for me. What? The RV. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay, we're talking for, he said, the rest of your life. The rest of your life? Yeah. You're oh, all, I am not going to be on a sailboat sailboat? for the rest of my life. Uh, keep in mind, Kendra, that you're stuck to the, the land, land, the continent, <laughs> sadness <laughs> that you're on. So the North American, South American is all you can go for the rest of your life. That's very true. Well, you get the yeah. land bridge over to China, to Russia. Yeah. Is there a and sailboat? You can go all over the world. RV and in case you don't know, my husband works for Camping World, where so you're saying to so us, so I can get a really answer there. Yeah, I can really get a nice RV, like a like so that luxury. Count. That's a biased answer. That doesn't count. <laughs> right, just because, <laughs> Matt, just because Matt can get you a good RV instead of a boat, <laughs> that's a biased answer. The comfort <laughs> level of the rest of my life can be. More so in an RV, mm-hmm. and and I've been seasick before, like the whole oh, all right, all right. Like, so rough water. So 
situation. There's definitely some sort of bias. I mean, I can make my 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 personal space in an RV be a little mm-hmm. bit more comfortable for the rest of your life type so of status. you're saying the hangover effect gets put up by a factor of 10 on the sailboat. No. Uh, oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think sailboats are nice for like maybe a month max or something. Uh, like like tequila, not- you're constantly moving. Yeah. Down, yeah. Getting sloshed around. Yeah, that... <laughs> Final answer, RV. Mm-hmm. RV. RV. Paul, sailboat or RV? I would have to say the RV as well. Woo! Mm-hmm. And I, I was just kind of throwing that at Kendra too. No, I, I really want to be able to see this country <coughs> in an RV. That's something that we've been talking about for a number of years, is being able to get into an RV and just going out there and just seeing this country, this continent, and... The, the, the North American, South American continents are large enough where you can see everything and take almost a lifetime to see it. I don't think that you could, I don't, I don't think you'd run out of options. So I would say the RV. Nick? Even though I agree with Paul about, even you, though I you agree could, with you Paul, could, I'm going to say something else. Yeah, of course. <laughs> even though I agree with Paul in saying, you, you know, you can travel both continents without seeing anything twice for the rest of your life but for me I grew up on boats I grew up on the sea um, I grew up at the beach so for me I, I would be more than happy to live the rest of my life on a boat on a sailboat on a 20 foot boat with one little grill and a, and a bed that I have to make out of sea turtles and everything else Aquaman Aquaman <laughs> Aquaman absolutely it would, be, but I, it would be anchored right outside of a contract it would be <laughs> my home base my home base would be off the coast of Puerto Rico for sure <laughs> for sure but for me the love of the sea and the love of the boats which I'm pretty sure I, I've never said this before to you guys but the love of the sea and the love of the boat of, of being on a boat and kind of going out into the middle of the ocean where you can't see land, that's absolute bliss for me. I love that so much. Absolutely. I've never heard that before. I, like I said, I've never told you guys that. That, that for me is, is, is I'd be in heaven every day of my life. Living on a yacht or living on a sailboat, I would do that. All day long. Even if the sailboat was 10 feet long. Yeah, your option was a sailboat, not a yacht. (laughs) So, just remember that. Sailboat. So, sailboat. 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 Well, they range anywhere from 10 feet to 40 feet. So, anywhere in that range, I'll be more than happy. As long as I'm out in the sea, give me a fishing line, I'll drop it in the ocean, I'll be fine. All he needs is a fishing line. Huh? And a bed of sea turtles. And a bed of sea turtles, exactly. Absolutely. Some palms and sea turtles. Okay, would, you, would, your, would, your, would your answer change if you had to live in the sea glass? If I had to live in the sea glass? Sea class photo. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it would. None yeah, it would. Look at that face. Not a Fravo. <laughs> no, where they go? I mean, we're talking the rest of our lives, so I think it has to be. Well, that's what I'm saying. It would have to be some. It would have to be luxury. Yeah. It would have to be a big one. Yeah. Yeah. It'd have you to know be what I mean? One. It'd have to be like a three-bedroom moving house on wheels. And for me, it, it, I, I guess it would be very nice to have a 40-foot sailboat, but. Even if it was a 20-foot sailboat, for me, being out at sea is absolutely enjoyable. I love it. And Paul's laughing you at me. You would get swallowed up, dude. <laughs> I would. The first storm. The first storm. I'd be calling for the Coast Guard. For Why sure. the last six comments all by Brad? <laughs> I think he's up to like $300 by now. I know he's the only person watching the show, but he's like the only person who's, I don't know, he can't shut up. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dave, RV or sailboat? RV Go. all the way. What? RV all the way. RV all the way. Yeah. If I if I wanna be on a boat, I'll just play Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Best boating experience ever. But <laughs> did he just say so boating? There is, there is, so, 
there's so much there's so much to see uh, in, in the, in the Americas yes. in the Americas that and, yeah I just I would totally take the RV yeah absolutely why not the boat well it's it's I don't know I, I like I'm a land lover <laughs> <laughs> well you said, know, Dave. If I want to live with the giant squids, you know, I would have been born as Aquaman. I like my land. There's only one Aquaman here. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Momoa, eat your heart out, baby. <laughs> uh, I would go with the RV. That's actually been a dream of mine for a long time to have an RV and, um, and live in that. I don't need a lot of space, and it's funny. Um, I seem to spend most of my life in one of two rooms of my house. Either the three-season porch or my office, which has the fireplace, you know. And, you know, I often think, you know, why do I have this huge freaking house when all of us seem to congregate into these two little rooms, you know, one six months out of the year, the other the other six months out of the year. And I think, you know, ha having an RV will give you that space, mm -hmm. but you don't have any, that's it's true, you don't have the multiple bedrooms, you don't have the multiple, you know, other, you know, but again, I'm not spending time there, you know, my wife is not spending time there. You know, the girls, you know, they're in the living room you know, playing Minecraft or watching YouTube or something. And, um, you know, so, but, you know, and my parents always had a, a vision of doing an RV and going around the country and, and doing that. And they kind of gave me that bug. And mm -hmm. I can't get away from that. So it would be an RV for me. So... There you go. And you can always go down to the ocean, too. We can always go down to yeah, the ocean. Yeah, drive down to the ocean. We can always drive down to the ocean. You can always tow a boat on the end of the RV. Mm-hmm. Yes, you can. <laughs> I've never seen it, but yeah, sure. Well, next week, people, we've got one heck of a show for you. Let me tell you. Next week, we have the man himself, the beard, the gnome, Kurt Kendall, <laughs> on the show. And we are going to be smoking the Factory 57, the 724 Factory 57 Toro. That's going to be an epic show. And I believe it is going to be an all-cigar show. But not just because Kurt Kendall is going to be on. Because we also have a second guest who is going to be on. Who? The Mad Fisherman himself, oh, Charlie Moore, nice. is going to be on the show with us as well. And he is a good friend of Kurt's, a great friend of Twins. And that is going to be a lot of fun on that show next week. We're going to be, we're going to be, wow. I don't even know what to think is going to happen with that. He also, I'm not going to get a word in edgewise. <laughs> he also sleeps on a bed of sea turtles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. So you're not going to want to miss. You're not going to want to miss uh, uh, next week's show. It's going to be epic. Between the bearded man and the fisherman, it's going to be fun. And the 724 uh, Factor 57 is a great cigar. Um, nice, medium, medium plus. Um, that's going to be great. And that's all leading up to July 24th, which is 724 day here at Twins. And uh, we're going to have a lot to talk about what's going on at the store. We have specials going on uh, with 724 Cigars all month long. And um, we'll talk more about those next week when we have Kurt on the show with us. So be here next Monday night, 8 o'clock, for Kurt Kendall and Charlie Moore, the Mad Fisherman, right here on Not Just Blowing Smoke. We'll see you guys next week. Take care. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye. Stay You've been listening my to Not Just Blowing Smoke, and drink that the podcast that brings the All wealth day. of knowledge, expertise. Another smoke, another day. <clears throat> you guys didn't know that about me, huh? Nope.
that was. No, you never talk about it. You never talk about being on a boat or growing up on the ocean yeah. in the whole year I've known you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, man, that's uh when I was uh when I was small though. When I was a young, <laughs> when I was a young man. Notice how he doesn't say when he was small.